Welcome to a podcast by OpenTheWord.org, where we discuss a bit of Bible, a bit of life, and a bit of politics. In the book of Revelation, the Apostle John's vision of the calamitous events that will be occurring in the end times, we read of the strange thing that will be happening on earth when God touches the sun. Hi, my name is Dean Smith. And as we study the book of Revelation, we read that God will put the earth through three sets of seven different judgments. The breaking of the seven seals in Revelation chapter 6, the sounding of the seven trumpets starting in chapter 8, and the final set, the pouring out of the bowls of wrath in chapter 16. And within that final group, that final set, the seven bowls of wrath, we have an interesting judgment aimed directly at our son. We read, quote, The fourth angel poured out his bowl upon the sun, and it was given to it to scorch men with fire. Men were scorched with fierce heat, and they blasphemed the name of God who has the power over these plagues, and they did not repent so as to give him glory. Revelation chapter 16, verses 8 to 9. Unquote. Three things immediately stick out in this passage. First, there is no doubt that God is the one who initiates it. It is part of God's judgment upon the earth. Secondly, we read that when the fourth angel poured the bowl of wrath on the sun, it released a massive amount of heat upon the earth. It, would dis it was described as a fierce heat that scorched men. In fact, according to Thayer's Greek dictionary, the word scorch can mean to, quote, to be tortured with great heat, unquote. Thirdly, we see man's response. They actually blasphemed the name of God. In other words, they blamed and, and cursed God, but they did not repent. Now, anyone following the mainstream media over the summer of 2023 has undoubtedly been been trampled by news of the record-breaking heat waves that took place over the summer. Look at some of these headlines. The New York Times reads, quote, heat records broken across the earth. Even Climate NASA jumped into it and wrote, NASA announced summer 2023 hottest on record. Yahoo News, quote, land temperatures in Spain surpassed 60 degrees centigrade as deadly heat wave Sweets Europe. The Associated Press headline read as heat wave named Cerebus has Southern Europe in its jaws and it's only going to get worse. Predictably, the media's climate activists have been, have been trumpeting the recent record breaking heat wave as another sign that we have to stop carbon emissions, as seen by these headlines from The Guardian, for example, quote. Longer heat waves driven by turbocharged climate change, says scientists. And from the New York Times, we read, quote, climate change drove weather heat waves extreme records analyst finds. No one questions that the climate is changing because that has been going on for the past 2,000 years. But what is debated is the cause. Is it being caused by human activity or is there a natural explanation for what is happening? Though this heat is being blamed on human activities such as driving SUVs and eating meat, what isn't getting as much press is the unusual sunspot, that sunspot activity that has been taking place on the sun over the summer of 2023. The sun, which is so large that we could literally almost fit 1.3 million Earths inside it, has a profound impact on Earth's temperatures and seasons. Now, astronomers have been studying sunspot activity for well over 400 years, and they noticed a peculiar thing taking place during the mini ice age that struck Europe between the 1300s and the 1800s. There was a significant drop in the number of sunspots, and there was actually months when they did not record a single sunspot. It was a very unusual celestial event. This cooling resulted in significantly heavier snowfalls across Europe, and paintings from the 1600s depicted people starting, 
skating on Britain's frozen Thames River a very unusual event. But perhaps most concerning, the cold resulted in crop failures across Europe, leading to famine and disease. And it was not just Europe. In 1779, the New York Harbor froze over, allowing people to walk on the ice from Manhattan to Staten Island. Now, to be sure, scientists have stated that other natural causes probably contributed to this many ice age, but most agree that the reduced number of sunspots was certainly a major contributing factor. So if a reduced number of sunspots can result in cooling, then obviously too many could, could, could arguably have the opposite effect and cause an increase in temperatures. And this is where it gets interesting because according to an article on space.com, NASA and the National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration, otherwise known as NOAA, reported that the sun became very active this past June, recording 160 sunspots, the most in a single month for over 20 years. I first saw reports of this in an article by Michael Snyder, who publishes the Economic Collapse blog, specializes in events associated with the end times. He stated that this increased activity was a bit of a shock to both NASA and NOAA, as both agencies were projecting much less activity. But it was not just the number of sunspots, it was also their size. According to an article on Live Science on July 4th, 2023, one of those sunspots called A3354 was 10 times larger than the Earth and grew to that massive size in under 48 hours before releasing a massive X-class flare that hit Earth, causing a short radio blackout. In its article, Life Science tells us a bit more about AR3354. We read, quote, the enormous dark patch named AR3354 emerged on the solar surface on June 27th and within 48 hours had grown to cover around 1.35 billion square miles or 3.5 billion square kilometers or 10 times wider than Earth. Space weather scientists were alarmed by the colossal sunspot's rapid emergence and feared it could spit out a barrage of potentially har harmful solar storms, according to spaceweather.com, unquote. So while the experts were caught off guard by the sudden and dramatic increase in solar activity, this may be one of the reasons why we had such dramatic weather this summer in addition to the heat waves. This included a tornado mega cluster that hit Chicago in mid-July, canceling flights and leaving thousands without power. Then, in mid-July 2023, ABC News reported that, that over a two-day period, the state of Vermont received as much rain as it would typically receive in two months, resulting in the worst flooding the state has seen in 100 years. Along with this, there was also reports of catastrophic flooding in India. But aside from these recent reports, a very curious thing has also been taking place on the other side of the Atlantic Ocean. Experts are warning that the Euphrates, a massive river system that travels through the Middle East, including Iran, Syria, Iraq, and Turkey, may be drying up. It is so bad that according to an article in the Irish Times, the UN issued a warning earlier this year stating that the Euphrates is at its lowest water level in 40 years, and this is starting to impact the people who depend on this, on this river for their survival. In fact, in 2021, the Iraqi government even issued a warning that the Euphrates, as well as the Tigris River, could be completely dry by 2040 if things don't change. There seems to be a number of factors contributing to this decline in addition to the higher temperatures and drought, including a mismanagement of the water resources and the construction of several hydroelectric dams on the river in Syria, Turkey, and Iran. So why is this relevant? 
Well, at the beginning of this podcast, I discussed the fourth bowl of wrath that was poured out upon the sun mentioned in Revelation chapter 16, verses 8 to 9. But then two verses later in Revelation 16, verse 12, we read about the sixth bowl of wrath being poured upon the great Euphrates River, causing it to become completely dry. We read, quote, The sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates, and its water was dried up to prepare the way for the kings from the east, Revelation 16, verse 12, unquote. So 2,000 years ago, the book of Revelation warned that in the lead-up to the second coming of Christ, one of the world's great water systems would become completely dry. It is pretty apparent that the two bowls of wrath, the extreme heat and the drying up of the Euphrates are probably connected. But the Euphrates is still flowing, so we haven't entered the bowls of wrath judgment yet. But it's clear that at some point, the fourth bowl of wrath will be poured out upon the sun and we will enter a time of unprecedented intense heat that will be significantly more severe than anything we have experienced up to now, and this will ensure the drying up of the Euphrates River. And curiously, men will not see this heat as a, as a judgment of God because they will be too busy blaming SUVs and climate change for the problem instead of God touching the sun. Thank you for joining me on this podcast, and I will catch you again. Thanks again for joining us on our podcast. Please check out our website at opentheword.org. If you enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe to receive notifications of future broadcasts. As well, please take a moment to provide a rating and even a review. Thanks again for listening.